And we're recording. All right. Hello, and welcome to the After Party Conversations with Spy Party Players. Today, I'm joined by Magician1099 and Radiophone. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yes, three-person cast. Um, it has been far too long. I'm very sorry for that. But we've got a very interesting subject to talk about today. We're going to talk about um, the challenges of making a tutorial for Spy Party. Oh, many. yes. Uh, well, it it was quite the challenge. <laughs> yep, I think I think your sigh set the mood very well. It's one of the. <laughs> uh. Oh man! <laughs> I think magician had a great time doing it. <laughs> just... Okay, it, it was fun. It was fun. It was just stressful too. It was. It, it was. was it... it was incredibly stressful. I can tell you that. Uh, Magician here did most of the work, and the fact for our, that he's for our dead video. makes me very happy. Uh, so, for those of you who don't know, there was technically two different tutorial projects that we ended up with. Uh, me and Spirit did one, and then Sharper did a really amazing series of tutorial videos. Absolutely incredible. Oh, hopefully, hopefully, you'll remember to link it in the description. Uh, of the of the video, it's not but... like there's like sixteen annotations. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like no. I, uh... f- fortunately, I I guess for mine, since I just post these to my YouTube channel, someone could just like click on the channel name and just like get all the videos that way. Whereas for your yeah, yours yeah, for you the go. tutorial video you guys did, I'll definitely post a link of that in the description. Actually, no. Um, but, but before we get into it, I, I was quite proud of this idea. Something I did for each of the videos is um, it has this little note at the top of the description that says uh, "click show more for transcript," and it's got a full transcript of all the text in that wow. episode. Wow! Good God! Man. Wow! You're putting effort into your <laughs> YouTube videos. This is, <laughs> blows my mind. No, but um, uh, but I feel yeah, I feel awkward just talking about that one. So. Uh, I want to start with sort of uh, what generally we were trying to do with this, what the challenges were, and then sort of um, uh, attributes individually of the two different projects. So, um, I th- I think we all sort of like had ideas before this, before taking on these projects, um, and maybe these ideas have changed, uh, or thoughts have changed after afterwards. But like, what are the challenges of teaching somebody to play Spy Party? Because it, it, it does have its own like specific challenges compared to other games or other things in teaching it to people. Like, what what do you guys think are the main challenges in teaching Spy Party specifically to a person who's never heard of it? Well, um, before I answer that question, I kind of want to rewind a little bit to the origins of our project. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this streamer we know named Lieutenant Thomas. He's probably somewhat both famous and infamous in the Spy Party community, but I digress. Uh, he wanted to. Uh, he just said out of the out of the blue at one point during one of his streams that he wishes there was a video that he can link to, uh, you know, new viewers to explain what the game was. And it, you know, the 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 it was idea we wanted to do for a little while. Yeah, yeah. And the idea of one, a tutorial. We just started it very humbly. You know, I opened up a Google Doc. It's like, oh, this is going to be a fun little project. <laughs> but like 20 minutes in, I realized, <laughs> wait, wait so a minute. Nice. There's an entire community that could probably use this. I think this is going to take longer than an hour. I should probably get some help. <laughs> and that's <laughs> and that's when I, you know, I, I asked Magician very humbly if, you know, he could give me a hand. The the idea of a tutorial has has been in the forums for a while, and there have been some. I know KCM did a short uh, tutorial series, and I saw, uh, I think it was Drawn, too. He did a little bit of a tutorial series. And uh, the, the aim of me and Spirit's video was to have one video for uh, new players to see, j- just to get a brief overview of, of Spy Party. And so... Yeah. Yeah, we wanted, like, the absolute bare essentials of what exactly the game was. Yeah, and, 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 and going... Very difficult. Yeah, and going back to your question, like, what the difficulties are of, like, the, determining what to teach new players, and that was, like, the biggest debate I think we've had, like, in the Spy Party forums when, when I'm talking to both Sharper and Spirit. Like, the biggest debates I had in making this video was, what do we not include in a video like this, 
Like, there are so much to Spy Party. And there are debates about what new players should teach. Like, there, there is a big debate. I think I had this with you, Sharper. Uh, back when uh, the double perspective video was an idea, and we should probably talk about that too, how our ideas changed. But, uh, mm-hmm. like, I was really against teaching strategies in, in this video. Like, for example, like, I don't want to tell someone, hey, memorize these statues. Like, I would instead go about saying, uh, there are three different types of sh- statues in this game. There's the Venus, the Falcon, and and the head. Wait, did I? yeah, Venus, Falcon, the head. So it was all about like determining what they need to know and what I would rather them learn on their own. Uh, so th- that was like one of the biggest challenges. Hmm. Yeah, you, you you don't want players to just be imitating what you would do. You want like right, yeah. right. Like I don't like I don't want people to. I don't, I don't. I don't want them to go in Spy Party like, like lear- knowing a strategy. They're learning a strategy from one specific person. So, yeah, that's basically that was the whole challenge: trying to learn the difference between strategy and you know basic game concepts. Yeah, it, and it's, as um... people who've played this game for years and years and years, we basically had to rewind our brains to that beginning point when we first started playing the game, to you know understand what exactly is it that we need to know now, instead of you know, a hundred games from now, a thousand games from now. Mm-hmm. Did um did either of you try talking to people who never played before and sort of uh, getting their input or like showing drafts to them to see if, if they caught things out and said, wait a minute, I don't understand what this means, because it's like obvious to you since you know what it is? Well, it's quite interesting, because like I I always like occasionally like to type in Spy Party into YouTube and then filter to upload date and see like if there's any people playing Spy Party or new p- people playing Spy Party. Yeah, there are a few YouTubers who just started, not just started, but have been playing Spy Party uh, and pretty regularly, and uh, they're pretty new. It was interesting because they've been playing for a while now. Uh, that they, they, I, I can see them evolving and what they know and what they might misinterpret about the game, which is interesting for me to watch. But I also I also looked in the forums, like uh, to see new players' opinions. Like I think there's a new player thread, not really new player anymore. I think it was Angry Hatter or something. But yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, it, it was interesting, like to see their perspectives. But like they've they've already gotten really good at the game, so I couldn't really get much information about that. But I just I just when, when we were making this tutorial, like I had to really think, like, is this overwhelming, or if like they would be able to get a grasp of the game? I I think the basic concept of Spark Party is easy to get, but like. The individual missions might be confusing. I just, I just had to think of like, if a viewer watches the Spy Party competitive league, what's the most common questions they have, and what would my re- response be as short as possible? Yeah, cool. Um, I'm trying to think what the yeah. So I, I guess uh, from there we can lead into spe- uh, specifically what the overview video that you guys made was. So, so the title of it is uh, "What is Spy Party?" Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, it it sort of run runs through. Well, like so. F- first of all, w- one of the things I really like about it is that um, you guys very very clearly from a um, from the start of magician showing me uh, spirits drafts um, in that Google Doc was that you very much cared about sort of setting this specific tone, like getting people in into that. Um, uh, perhaps as like a lead-in for teaching them about the game, or, or, or perhaps because that's what you like want people to associate um, the game with. And so you lead with that, which I thought was a really good idea. Um, yeah, I mean... I feel like there's a certain way that you should sell a game, and instead of telling people, you know, the mechanics right away, you can make them feel like, you know, there's a there's an essence to the game that they really need to get into. You know, like there's this, this suspense or this fun they could have. And even if they don't understand exactly what they need to do yet, they, you know, they know there's something interesting going in. 
the 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 intro slash trailer part of of the video was all spirits doing, and I just edited it, edit it together. But uh, I think the main goal of that was just trying to get new players intrigued about what the game was. There there are many possibilities of how you do that, but I think it turned out pretty well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Agreed. that's the. Uh... <sighs> That's the unfortunate part about this game is that there's just so many aspects to it that, you know, selling it in that way can be very difficult because not even Checker has, you know, completely established a tone for the game yet. So I was just kind of playing by ear, I suppose. Yeah, that was that was a debate in the forums. Like when we published the draft, like there's some questions about the tone. I won't get too much into that, but like I said, like, there's there there's so many ways you could sell Spy Party, and it's it, it's difficult trying to choose how you are going to. Hmm. Yeah, well, I I feel like that that's changed a little bit with the new art because the the new art I feel has a bit more voice to it of what the sort of tone of the game is. It, it it's something where there's like you know a sophistication to it and a, a lot of like care about the detail but at the same time there's a kind of levity and uh, and warmth to it um so I, I i feel like you guys hit that tone really well of like saying you know this is like a, a dangerous sophisticated place but there's still like a bit of silliness to it with the fact that you like end on the banana bread it's like wait a minute this is silly like right yeah yeah, yeah right? Like, exactly if someone sees spy party just from the art like they're not gonna think oh my god this is a really competitive game like they're, they're gonna look at the art first and say, hey, that looks kind of pretty, you know? So... <laughs> I think that's the gist of Spy Party, basically, for any new player, is that, oh, this looks like a fun game, and then a hundred games from then, they're going to be like, holy crap, <laughs> this goes so deep. Hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, and then from from there, uh, the video that, that you guys did... Um, I, I guess, like, it's about half of the description, like, just going over the missions? Or would you say, like... Pretty, pretty, pretty much yeah. the whole rest of the video is about the missions. Like, you get a brief overview about what the game is. You can... Basically, we just say whatever Exclam explains Spy Party is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then we go on uh, detailing the missions. And I feel like the re- reason why we focus on that as the majority of the video is because that's going to be one of the most common questions you get in streams videos etc is just what the missions are hmm. so yeah, n- needless to say a lot of fat was cut from the original draft of the script oh yeah yeah, yeah. We, had, just... we we had a lot of debate about whether we should explain what hard tells and soft tells are like whether like how many uh, what what kinds of maps there are and like we didn't really we we, we agreed that we didn't really need that in a beginner video Hmm. It's the yeah, it's the difference between you know, we we wanted to keep the video a certain length, and we wanted to avoid all these abstract concepts that that would just be so wishy washy when we tried to present them, and new viewers would be like, I don't even care about that. And, and part of what we uh, when we were deciding what to cut, it, it had to do with your uh, tutorial series, Sharper, because. Like, because you go, your tutorial series goes more in depth, even though it's still beginners, we thought that was great so that we could cut some of the stuff from our script. And then I would just link everyone to your videos because your videos, I think, would help people who are already interested in the game and want to learn more. Yeah, yeah we're, we're very thankful for you, Sharper, because <sighs> you basically decided how exactly the whole script was going to be written. Well, it, it was very serendipitous, wasn't it? Because... Um, as far as I recall, the timelines for these sort of happened at the same time, and it was nice, like us being able to trade notes back and forth to get a clear idea of what e- each person was doing. And I, I, I think we made the effort to like, um, th- uh, and I, I think this helped the fact that we had two separate projects. It forced us to think concretely about what we wanted each of them to be. Right. Right. Um, yeah, but but. Uh, uh, and and that's something I, I think is is very valuable about the the, the video that you guys did is that uh, you were very very aware of the fact that you don't want to overwhelm a person with details because um, Spy Party is very ver- verbose and there's like lots of details that you need to learn and so having something that is like uh, very like uh, like broad description help helps a lot just in like 
re- uh, repeating some of the idea of like what is this game about and it, and not like getting uh, bogged down in detail. Yeah, and obviously I think like part of the issue will resolve once we get an in-game tutorial in. But I I already think that we overwhelm new players like when we're in new player streams or like if you're mentoring someone. I I I really think that like we we might scare more people away than we think. Like I'm trying to think how many people I've mentored and seen come back, and <laughs> <laughs> the number is not not encouraging to me. So and th- that just may be the way I mentor, but it's it's kind of worrying to me. And so that's part of the drive of making this video. Yeah, I'm not going to disparage the Spy Party community because it's a great community. But if one person asks a question in a Twitch chat room, they're going to get at least four different answers. <laughs> <laughs> they're all going to be completely different and they're going to be thinking, oh my God, what is this game? I'm, ki- I'm kind of okay with that. It, it, it's just like, just how... How, uh, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think we explain too much. Like, even if they ask a question, like I, it's the way we answer and it's, it, it might be overwhelming. Hmm. Yeah. The, the best manifestation of this was, um, <laughs> in the stream the other week, someone was asking, so is Spy Party a skill-based game or is it a luck-based game? And the Twitch chat <laughs> just exploded. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> this poor person uh, was just overwhelmed by like every possible <laughs> response. And eventually um, they completely forgot that someone asked a good question. It was just two people debating <laughs> after a while and it was just, oh no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no. Yeah, that, that was fantastic. That's why we didn't write this tutorial by committee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, you guys are all wonderful, everyone listening to this, but my God, you know, sometimes there's a lot of ideas that could be thrown around. Well, that has to do with, like, the different ways you can sell Spy Party and people's different opinions about what new they think new players should know. So, you know, exactly. not ev- yeah. this video was not going to please everyone. It's it's impossible. This is one of the most complex... I mean, this is probably hyperbole, but this is one of the most complex video games at least I have ever played. So, you know, it's hard to sell a nice, simple tutorial to a, just a casual viewer. But I, I I think also part of that is just the fact that, um, you know, Chris and John are both, like, working really hard and are overwhelmed by the amount of stuff they have to do, and uh, tutorials and accessibility is still something that hasn't been approached yet. And so what, what was sort of exciting to me about this was uh, that it, it's a challenge that hasn't really been picked up yet of, of someone going, okay, like how do you actually like try and accessibly lead someone in, into Spy Putty? So um, that, that was one of the things I was I thought was exciting about it was, was that the like tutorial accessibility part was something that hadn't really been tried yet um, to the detail that we went to. Yeah, there there has been ideas of the in-game tutorial I've seen in the forums. Like, I think KCM was the one who suggested like you get, you you have a really basic tutorial that everyone plays first. Like, just show like maybe the missions, like swapping the statue, and then show that from the sniper perspective. And then once you give them like those basics, you have optional tutorials after that where if they want to learn more then they they go into the in-game tutorials and and like learn more stuff about more complex ideas but yeah like it it has to be a, first of all the in-game tutorial has to happen before it goes on steam i don't i i think you, you most think? people would agree with that i yeah. i think we need a tutorial before it goes on steam mm, that that could that could be sad news to 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 Chris. He's like, oh come on, there's so many things. I know. The need to go into the steam. Don't not make his checklist bigger, magician. That's not fair. <laughs> Increasing the checklist. I mean, I know this is a. I know this is a very you know singular example, but Minecraft, for example, never had a tutorial. It still That's doesn't true. have an in-game tutorial. It has a fan-sourced materials. Hmm. You know. And I think that, you know, ours doesn't have to be the only one. It can be the first. And I think other people can make their own tutorials, you know, not necessarily inspired, but at least to influenced, I suppose, by our work. And, you know, the community can do a good job of explaining the game. 
Well, well the Checker actually makes the game. We do have a Spy Party wiki, which is pretty incredible. Because I think it's just, is it RJW who does most of that stuff? I forgot who, who does the Spy Party wiki, but it's, it's pretty impressive how much effort they put into that. I, I, yeah, I refer to that wiki several times during my script writing. Mm. Yeah, and most new, uh, most new players do. Like we under like most new players do not go on the forums. They if they want to learn about Spy Party, most of them go to the Spy Party wiki. So yeah, well that that's a that's another problem. The fact that the forum doesn't get used by new players. Mm. Um, but yeah, and uh, actually re- re- related to that, another great source more for like intermediate players is uh, Kaylee has basically written like a full book um, on yeah. <laughs> Has he I just done never, one on Spy or I have Spy never Party? read that book. It's and fantastic. I, you have to read it. I remember reading part of it like when I was like a beginner, and when because we when when uh, there was a new player streaming Spy Party, Kaylee links the book, and I'm no, no going don't to do kill that. Them. You're don't gonna like that. that's why like we're gonna overwhelm him. Like <laughs> it, it was a special day too. This new streamer, and it was a it happened to happen on a day where all the Spy Party players were apparently available. <laughs> because, <laughs> at, like, I saw, like, eight Spy Party people come into this new player's stream when he's about to end, and, and when, when the streamer is about to end, uh, like, I'm not going to say you should play more Spy Party, right? But but when you link the book, <laughs> it's like, you're, you're basically saying, like, I expect you to play more Spy Party. And it's like, I'm not going to put that kind of the pressure on The quiz is him. next Monday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. This. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, don't I don't know. know. Maybe we could link it at like the end of the intermediate tutorial I did. Maybe, maybe from there yeah, you can link that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah like, I, I don't. You know, you you mentioned it. I'm surprised we didn't link the Spy Party Wiki in any of our videos. We should probably do that. Probably should. I can do that. Yeah, I, I I can do that on the video. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Um. Yeah. I. I'm not sure if we should go into this specifically do, do we want to talk about like attributes of the beginner and in, in, intermediate guide because I, I i think there's some interesting things to un- unpack there about like uh how to how to teach the game and the sort of limitations even of what i was doing with that series of uh uh yeah so yeah i was i have a question for you actually yes, to hijack please. your own show here how <laughs> exactly did you decide between beginner and intermediate material ah okay um so, my my general thought was uh, the beginner tutorial is uh, so you you know at, at like packs or um, just teaching someone to play you always start them on a beginner map. It was like okay, what are the things they need to know um, to play a beginner versus beginner match, and then what's the stuff outside of that that they need to know after that to play all the rest of the games. Um, and it, it it did change a bit like before I think. Um, talking uh so someone actually kind of disagreed with me on this and thought talking should be something that's in the intermediate because they don't need to know it but i I thought oh well it kind of helps to know like how to talk in conversation before you do contact double agent because then that can like inform you're like oh i know that i can like stop talking after contact to try and like um trick the, the the other player um uh stuff like that so short short answer is Anything they need to know to play a beginner game, I thought, okay, put that in the beginner. Anything that we can get away with teaching them after that, put in the intermediate. Yeah, that, that's true. I, I will take full responsibility being the one who, who disagreed with putting talking in beginner. And just because, like, when, when, when I was a beginner, like, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to talking. Like, if no one talked in circle, no one sniped me for it then. Or, like, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to that. But, yeah, I can, I can see your point there. Yeah, well, it, it's like sowing a seed long term. It's like eventually you need to know about it. And so I figure out... Um, well, and like this, this gets to the sort of um, uh, philosophical idea we were talking about before. Of we don't want to teach people how to play; we want to like teach them the like ingredients or features, so that they, then they can like create strategies themselves. And so, if you tell someone how talking works, and then immediately after that, in the next video, you teach them how to contact the double agent, and they like piece together the idea that oh, I can like stop talking after I've contacted and then I look like I'm not a suspect, they feel like really smart for figuring that out. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. 
hopefully. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like that that was the worry with the video on action tests was I uh I decided I wasn't going to describe what any of the like uh su- succeeds or fails at action test for the individual missions were. Um, right. Which is yeah. debatable yeah. and I understand that debate. Um but like the the hope is that then the person goes in understanding how action tests work and then has like discovery for each of the missions is like okay like i have no idea what the like succeed at uh swapping the statue is going to be um and like m- maybe it's something where there's like too many details to it i mean we we know what happens when you swap the statue uh it'll like flash it's not going to swap until the next person comes and picks it up and it's going to swap at a faster rate like that's um uh, hope, hopefully your opponent knows how that works and so that they can like fill you in but if they're like two new players then that kind of may, maybe that's bad i don't know to, to have that be a thing that can just like stop the whole game where they're like confused about what had happened yeah i was i was debating about that like uh when we were first writing the script for me and spirits video it was we, I think we debated about whether including action tests in there, but when we found out you were doing it, it kind of made it easier on us. But oh even, 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 even that, like, like debating, like whether we should tell them, uh, all, like all the different missions, uh, subtle animations and the more obvious ones. But I think that's, that that's something for the end game tutorial to do. Or at least like the more advanced in-game tutorial, if my idea and KCM's idea goes through. But it's that's that's an interesting point. Like whether you let because practice mode does have the previous by missions thing where you can see like the animations for the more subtle animations and the more obvious ones. Mm. Uh, although not many people look at that, I find <laughs> for, I for new players don't. Look, yeah, like, exactly, exactly. P- people don't know it's there. <laughs> that does bring up the interesting point, though, about how, I mean, I think all of our videos are very, very spy-centric. And it yeah. Brings, it brings to topic how hard it is to actually talk about the sniper in a singular way that isn't re- entirely related to the spy. Yeah, and, and that and that was brought up uh in the forums too about me and spirits view like why why they were worried about it being too spy centric uh and i guess the the reason that kind of comes about is is like uh, when i try to uh teach new players spy party i always emphasize apply your spy knowledge to your sniper game because like a lot of a lot of new players I watch on YouTube and stuff like that, like they will swap the statue, and then when they're sniper, they don't watch that as sniper. And uh, like if you if you do emphasize on trying to apply what you know as as a spy to your sniper game, I feel like you'll know you you'll you'll learn the game a lot faster. And then granted, replays and stuff has helped that too, but it's because. Because uh, because people would then apply their spy knowledge to their sniper game, I feel like making a trailer around the spy is easier. Hmm. Well, it, it's more important, right? Because the spy role is the one where there are all the details you need to know about, and then that informs your sniper game. Right, 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 right. Yeah, because there's, I don't think there's anything when you're a beginner at Spy Party related to sniper that doesn't have to do with the spy. When right, you get exactly. more advanced, you can look into, like, you know, AI animations and the way people talk and the way people walk, but... It, it that, is, that is not something you want to teach a beginner. It basically yeah. comes down to, when you're first starting the game as a sniper, what spies... Do, are they doing their missions? And where are they doing their missions? And that's it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the hope with the uh, way we r- 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 wrote the video... Raised the road. It's 11 p.m. <laughs> that the uh, the information about spy missions could also be implied for what the sniper should do as they uh, play the game as well. Hmm. Yeah, some, something interesting I found with a... So um, I, I had videos marked that were about spy missions specifically, and I didn't, like, say 
uh, this mission is a hard tail mission or this mission is a soft tail mission. But I, I, I found, interestingly, for the soft tail missions, I'd always like append it at the end with just reiterating what the tell was. Because for the hard, hard tell one, it's kind of like self-evident. I say like, okay, the spy has to swap one of the statues. When that happens, it will like turn green on the spy screen and then it can just like cut to the sniper and show the statue changing. Whereas for soft tells, it's like kind of explain the idea, but then I found I needed to reiterate at the end what the sniper was looking for just to help get home the point, which was interesting. Yeah, and when I was watching watching those videos, like I immediately thought, like, eh, like, do you need to include that? Because that kind of goes with my, my theory that you shouldn't teach uh, snipers mm. uh, new sniper strategy and stuff. But I, I I I have to think, like, would they just then discount that mission and say, oh, that's a free mission for the spy? Because I I I, I have seen new people just say, oh, this mission is easy. The sniper will never catch this. Whereas, like, they don't take into account, like, going to statues could be suspicious, you know? So mm. just, it, 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 it's, again, a debate that, that can be had. Yeah. Well, it, it, was, it was helpful. Uh, I was getting proofreading from my dad because he's a good proofreader and is someone who uh, knows some things about the game but doesn't know, know how to play it. And so it was helpful having him proofread it because he, he would get to points and go, okay, but how do you know if um, uh, uh, if if this character is, is flirting? Um, it was like, right, oh, right. okay, like you you don't think about it because um, you, you watch for it all the time. So you're going, okay, so I actually need to like reiterate this. Of like, um, this is how you know that someone is flirting. And, they, right. <laughs> and that's the best part about like doing this whole project is that apparently we all forgot why exactly we knew anything about this game. <laughs> it, just, it just became, you know, knowledge, common knowledge to us. Hmm. And yeah. Yeah. We had to become new players again in order to do any of this. Yeah. It was an interesting experience. Hmm. For, for it. it, it did um, kind of remind me though, S- Seduce is probably the hardest one because it did sort of remind me of uh, uh, just how sort of hard to grok <laughs> that one is. Um, of, of like how how to watch for flooding. Um, although uh, when you know, as we often do, debate about like oh, like is seduce target like working? Does it need to be changed? Blah blah. blah. There's like always always debate about that. Um, and w- w- uh, there's like me and another person debating about this, and then there were two new players, and we just sort of asked them, hey, like, do you guys find seduce target difficult? And they they actually said no. They they said like, like sometimes they catch each other for it, sometimes they don't. So apparently, wow. At least yeah. for these two people, it does like scale w- for beginners where they're able to catch each other for it. That's interesting because like I I always think that seduce is one of the hardest missions to explain to a new player. Mm. Like you have to explain how you have to be. Well, it, it's not that hard to explain. It's just they don't they they do the mission they they do the mission. And like they'll discount it because it's a very hard mission to do. Uh, because at least it takes from... so long. Right. It's not. It's not difficult so much as it is tedious. Right. You exactly. Feel, you feel like you're wasting time, and you, you know, when you're first starting out, you always feel like the sniper's watching you. So taking too, so long to do one mission is a, it's stressful. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is the the, the intent. I, I guess the mission is. It, it's about spending valuable time. Yep. And I, you know, you guys are talking about seduce. When I tried to write the script, microfilm was so oh, that, that's... difficult. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you guys had a very impressive trick of doing a little like fast forward thing. I was like, oh, why didn't I think of that? That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Magician helped me a lot with that part because we were going back and forth about how exactly do you explain a mission when there's so, two ways to do it? Microfilm has always been notoriously hard to explain, but pretty easy concept to grasp once you actually do it. It's like whenever I try to explain microfilm in text, like you get a paragraph. Yeah. There, there's no stopping that, right? Because there's two ways to do it, and you know it's it's just a, a, a stupid mission to explain. But it, it really is. Like it shouldn't take as long as as it should, but. It's so much easier to just show it. It takes two seconds to show it with edited video. You show Absolutely. them one way, and then you show them the other. 
Mm. Yeah. And, and, and the fast forward trick was something I, I had in mind for a while just to explain stuff like that, because it's, it's, I, I, cutting away will work too, but I feel like just showing them the action speeded up helps them get a better grasp of what microfilm is. Yeah, it was a very good idea. That that's um that's actually a good point to bring up about microfilm. That that was so for this the tutorial series I did um the first video I did in in this format I I did transfer microfilm because because that was my like test bed. I'm like okay if this format works for transfer microfilm it will work for anything. Um, yeah. yeah, and f- fortunately enough, it did. Um, I was like able able to show it to someone who hadn't played before, and they actually understood what was going on. I was like, "Hallelujah!" Yeah, we did what we wanted to. Yes, finally. Because <laughs> um, I, I, I know. Did I? Uh, I know I should. Magician. I I, th- I think I posted these on the forum. So the like first iteration of the tutorial series I did was like three 10 minute videos going through everything and that didn't work. And then, then we tried the like, uh, uh, have, um, a like live match where each, each person is, uh, commentating what they're doing and that didn't work. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to, to talk about yeah, that yeah. a bit because so, so, uh, I think, yeah, it was, it was spirit who had the first idea of a tutorial and then, uh, sharper hopped along and, before any of the final product came out, he had the idea of of uh, I think I think it's better if you explain it. But you linked me a video of uh, the due process trailer. Yeah, yeah. So I, I really liked um uh so that there's this uh, cur- currently in development uh, tactical shooter called Due Process, and they have this really nice trailer um, where it's just. A, um, a match between two teams where they just cro- cross cut between the two sides because the game is like about hidden information like two teams plan out what they're going to do and then um, do it um, uh, so so it had this really nice feeling of um, uh, the like audience being in on being able to see what one team was thinking and then cutting to the other side and seeing like oh but they're like thinking in advance and know that they're going to do this and then you get to see it play out so I was like oh maybe that would work for Spy Party and it kind of did. Like an... I, yeah, th- yeah, I, th- I thought the idea was was great. And then uh, when we tried to do it, and I watched the video back, like it was, it, from my opinion, it was really overwhelming. Like not only were, were we kind of discussing strategy and stuff, but when you do a video like that, it it just did like this. The, I, I feel like a beginner would just be like. Oh, okay. I, I get the concept, but what did they just say? Mm. So, it would. I really wanted the 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 concept to work, but I, yeah, I, but you, I feel you can't like... force it, if right? It, right. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I I think the um, and and that was sort of the the realization I had is that uh, it it didn't work because they're very different things. Like due do, do process, it's really easy to to sort of get the idea because you know that if you shoot someone they will fall down and you know that like if someone doesn't have the line of sight to shoot the person then they will not fall down so it's like really easy to get like oh okay i know what these people are trying to do and i know what these people are trying to do whereas that's i think the main challenge we had with the spy party tutorials was teaching people what both roles are trying to do and how they can like try and stop each other from doing that like why the the spot the sniper being in view at a at a specific time is bad or uh, stuff like that. Yeah. So, I, mean, I honestly think that you guys could still do this project somewhere down the line, knowing what you know now, because what you're basically making is an, you know, something of an, an informed let's play or like a, you know, just applied, applied theory to a, what exactly you've already explained in the videos we've made. I think you could, you know, basically, make a spy party school series if you will i i I would agree i don't think it would be a good beginner video though exactly that's exactly you take what you've taught in the tutorials and you you know you apply it and you you know you introduce the uh different concept like uh you know shortened uh uh cast names and all that yeah, I feel like the audience for that kind of video would be aimed towards people who know what the game is but want to learn more. The hmm. 200 game crowd, we'll call. Yeah, there you go. There you yeah, go. Yeah. The, 
the tween crowd. Um, ac- actually, that sure. that was uh, what uh, got me started on, on this whole thing was I did um, uh, a little video where I took a game from one of the um, weekly streams and tried doing like cross-cut editing to make it more um, uh, passable and then, then showed it to someone. Yeah, that's who, where the idea came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was um, uh, Checker versus uh, uh, El- Elversnake. Um, it's like one game and I was like, okay, like, can I like use the magic of editing to make this possible to someone who hasn't played before? And the answer was no. I like showed it to some people and they're like, okay, I still don't understand what's going on. I was like, Damn. well, I, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily have to do that. I don't think that's your fault. I just, I, I think, Oh yeah. Yeah. I think that like people need to have some background of the game to understand that video. I think your video was a was great like people who know what the game is would understand it better with that kind of uh spectation stuff but they need to know like what swap is they need they need to know like the missions in order to kind of uh, to first learn know what that video is trying to help you with Hmm. see maybe that that's um but the the other other thing i sort of realized doing that is that uh for someone to do that for a whole match that, that we like... Yeah, dark, I mean, it's completely it's, unrealistic. Would, yeah, would, it, it'd be a big <laughs> challenge. Um, but I, I think there are... I think there are some shorthands from that that were useful that you sort of could apply and, and do it more quickly. L- like how uh, for any particular sport, they sort of have their understanding of, okay, here's when you cross-cut to this thing. Here's when you cross-cut to that thing. Um, like knowing, okay, when uh, someone does a green swap, you like show them doing that and you sort of cut back to the sniper and then when the mission actually goes off you like then cut back to show that swap happening um, right, right and then then cut to the sniper to show okay did they see it or did they not see it it's the rhythms of the game basically yeah. Yeah. And, and and split screen and spectation has made that a whole lot easier and and made people people lazy <laughs> like <laughs> i guess like i disagree because there, it's really hard because you're having to shift your attention between right. two views. Exactly. I, I'm saying, like, before we had that split screen, right, Kaylee would have to either just stick his camera on one view or switch between the two. Oh, and you'd have to rewind constantly to find that one point when the sniper right. may have noticed. The split it. screen, while not, not, it may or may not be effective in teaching new players, it's made it a whole lot easier on Kaylee. Because he could just set it, but it's probably even more overwhelming for a new player. But I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it's yeah, probably useful. Perspectives at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it it's probably useful to to I guess from the standpoint of knowing when to cut to one side or the other. Um, could because you have both in view, so you can like sort of look between them. And go okay, now we want to like go to the sniper screen to like see whether um, the thing that the spy is doing is in there like. Um, cone of vision because that's one of the limitations of it right is that uh yeah, be- yeah because they're stacked next to each other one of the like really important things for sniper is positioning your camera so that you like have something in view but it doesn't look like you're looking at it um and that gets like cut off if you're uh, in split screen yeah and then that's where i think like the switching of the views is still effective like i, I think if kaylee can manage to switch between the views while he's handling all sorts of stream stuff. I think he should, but you know, it it's it takes a lot of time to do that though. I I'd, I'd say split screen is for streams and for live broadcasts when you just can't handle that much information. Right, right, right. I th- I think, you know, being able to switch perspectives allows for more, you know. It allows for better videos because it it lets the viewer know exactly what's most important at what moment. Mm. Yeah, and uh, and you guys, uh, that that was helpful for your video as well. Um, uh, sort of towards the beginning of it, you like uh, have have that dramatic yeah. intro, and and then you have the like uh, split view, and then cut from there into the spy. And I thought, oh, that that's like a really good way of showing that there's two views of what's going on, and then cutting to one. Yeah, that but, was but all you all magician. Yeah, I, I but... would have to applaud them for that because that that took some serious thinking. But but you notice how I don't use it for the rest of the video. Like, yes. I just use it for that one one point, right? But it was because important. I'm, right, and 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 I'm emphasizing like spy and sniper uh, individually for the rest of the video. But I feel like that that first shot there gives a sense of okay, there's two players at this party. 
totally. Um, anything I was going to say? Oh, oh yeah, oh, I was going to say um, uh, the switching of the views sounds like a really dramatic way of describing that that concept. <laughs> um, so, someone at some point in this conversation said the switching of the views, and it was like, ooh. I think that was me, yeah. <laughs> it's like the migration of the geese, the switching of the views. <laughs> uh, the flight of the cunt. Yes, yes. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, uh, do you guys have anything else you wanted to talk about regarding this uh, this subject of teaching teaching people about Spy Party? It's, it's still a hard task. <laughs> yeah, it's incredibly difficult. We've learned a lot, and I think that we could possibly do more going forward. I have a question for both you guys. Steal your show again, Sharper. Go for it. Uh, if you were to do this again... What would you do differently? Because I, I mean, I don't think any of us are completely satisfied with the final products. Hmm. Uh, do you want to go first, magician? Oh, jeez, it's like there, there's so the many red th- laser magician. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Or yeah, green people in, have in your video. Yeah, people have complained about the laser not being red in the in the video for new players, but I made Woldar happy, so you know. <laughs> it was but, great because when I saw the first draft, I was like, hmm, shouldn't the laser be red? I was thinking out loud in the chat room, and a magician just typed three dots. I don't have I don't have that stop time. Talking. Yeah. Um <laughs> like I don't I don't know if I feel like if we if we change something, it would be a chain reaction, right? I feel like if if we if we try to change one thing, the 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 video and its intent may have may have changed. I don't I don't know because there there were so many suggestions in in the forums about our first draft and how like maybe you want to sell the the the. Uh, the spy trying to blend in with the AI, you know, why don't you start uh, your introduction with that? Because uh, I think that was Kaylee who suggested that and like mm-hmm. how he immediately hooks people with that. Right. And, and there, like, I, like I said, there's so many ways you can make a tutorial. And I feel like if, if we, we changed one thing, we would probably get a very different video. And I feel like we're not going to be satisfied with, because again, you can't please everyone. We're not going to be satisfied no matter what our final product is. Yeah, it's impossible to satisfy anyone. Yeah, Aww. everyone. Cool. Every we can satisfy <laughs> some person, but we can't satisfy everyone. Mm. Yeah, my my answer to this question is a cheat because uh, this was the third time I I, I did this because I had two previous iterations and I'm kind of sick with it. So my answer is, I wouldn't change anything just because I'm fucking tired of it. I'm like, I'm done. That's it. Just don't want to look at it. I anything. agree. Third pass is the last pass. Just please like <laughs> go home. Be happy with this or go home. Make, yeah, yeah. That, that's, I, I mean, that that is the great thing about, you know, the internet and, and YouTube is, um, uh, like, the, the moment I um, posted this, I saw it, like, uh, then showed other related videos, and I didn't realize Hunter for Hire had like a whole series of YouTube videos, and they were like a whole bunch of other things. Um, oh, those are really old, really? aren't they? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was from a few years ago. It, it was still an old art, but um, you know that uh, that is one of the great things. Uh, perhaps it's a bit of a double-edged sword, but th- that is one of the great things about um, making a game on the, the internet nowadays is that there's always other takes on. Uh, 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 on it that people can make someone could go oh i teach it this different way so then if they have the time and the effort they can go and go and make that thing and uh try it their way that's right if, if you want to make a tutorial you can just make it yourself <laughs> <laughs> but but then the like double double edge part of that is uh that can make it more confusing for people starting out they're like not sure where to look like where do you start um what do you read Right. That makes it sound so terrible. Do it yourself. <laughs> I don't care anymore. <laughs> you you did better go ahead. I'm just yeah, we're see. grizzled. Yeah, we're grizzled veterans now. <laughs> We've seen things, man. So, so, so really, drafts. So many drafts. So really, more than anything, this has just been like an empathy exercise for Chris, for um, us to know what it feels like to be Chris. It's like, oh, that's <laughs> what it's like. Yep. Mm. Oh man. 
Mm. Yeah, I think when we were working on this, we had a little uh, private Twitter chat, and we made the soon joke so many times throughout the <laughs> process. You know what's uh, funny I think about we that? Actually, became Checker at one point. We just <laughs> our souls matched. What well, What was funny about that was um, uh, it was either there or in the um, the stream chat. I posted like soon tm. And then it like turned into a link. I was like, what the heck? And I didn't realize that someone had actually made this like web page link. And if you click on the soon.tm link, it takes you to a page that says, just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Uh... <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know I was referencing that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, well, I think that's a good place to, to uh, cut things off for do a fade out. I, yeah, it, it's been so long since I did one of these, I can't remember how I actually end them. <laughs> that's, how, that's how bad I am. Um, yeah, so in, any any closing remarks, guys? Or do you think we've badgered this one? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll end by saying I think this whole process has emphasized how good the in-game tutorial needs to be. <laughs> It like so it's see it needs to be really good <laughs> it's it's gonna be difficult actually to figure out how exactly we do the in-game tutorial i'm sure checker's gonna do most of the work but i think he'd do crowdsourcing and when right. he does crowdsourcing he's gonna have a hell of a time because it's every so every heat. player is gonna have an opinion on it right mm. fun times ahead mm. And we leave you with that. <laughs> <laughs> An ominous the open horrible question. future. Yes. Yeah. It's dire. <laughs> love you, Checker. Yay. But that future's filled with more new character art and dossiers and all sorts of fun stuff, too. And oh, new yeah. New UI. New oh, yes. UI! Yeah. Remember yeah, I... when we were waiting for that? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chip. <laughs> I, th- yeah. I, I, think, I think it was smart of us that, that we... Um, uh, didn't didn't spend a lot of time like in the uh, like menus outside of the game because um, that stuff will change soon. So I think think yeah. that that was a good call. Yeah, when 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 Checker told us that the menus weren't uh, the the uh, the in game like overlay and stuff wasn't changing, we we're like, oh, okay, we're good. Mm. We'll just make the video then. Mm, totally. All right, cool. Well, thanks to, to both of you guys for uh, uh, coming in and chatting about this. It was really great to, to have you here. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. My chair has been squeaking this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, well, take care, everyone. We'll talk later.